This is Mega Gamer. You watch me, man. If you have to. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, everybody, and welcome back once again to the Dynasty Hot Seat. It's the only Dynasty show out there that is a certified inferno. And we are back once again with you know one of the best guests in Dynasty Hot Seat history. We have him on at least once a year, every year. It is the great and powerful Michael Bauer. You can find him over at Rewind CEO. He is the the captain of that dynasty rewind absolute epic show over there mike pleasure to have you back on we were just chatting for like 10 15 minutes before the show i didn't know if we'd ever get started because i could just talk to you all day <laughs> i could talk to you all day too dude honestly it's great i love being on your pod um if this is if you're here for some reason watching this because of me gotta hit the sub to my boy mags here great program Good stuff coming to all of the American people from across the pond, Scotland. Um, but I'll tell you what, I will say this. You, uh, UK, I, you're I was Scotland part of the UK. I should know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you European yeah. boys, you uh, really hold it down pretty good when it comes to American football. I'll say that. Got to give you yeah, we do all. some credit. We do all right. You know, we've got to, we've got to fight against, you know, the, the, you know, every, every now and again, and this will be the same for, for other people, other Europeans doing an American football podcast, every now and again, you'll get a stray, like a stray bullet from a random YouTube comment being like, <laughs> what, are the, what do these guys know about American football? Or I turned off as soon as I heard the accent, you know, <laughs> I've got I mean, if you're about to type that, yeah, fuck you. How about that? How about that? If you're about to you type that. There's no difference between you doing this and if I started a soccer podcast, as yeah. we call it over here. Um, by the way, I did find out that the origin of the word soccer is British, so don't hate us for using someone else's word. It's just it was ingrained in our head. So, Yeah, it comes from the word association football, right? Because so, there was association yeah. football and there was rugby football. And association football was shortened to soccer. Rugby football was shortened to rugger. So that's why people over here are called rugby rugger and... And oh, the soccer I, I thing didn't. Yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, there you go. So rugby is still called like rugby football, which is maybe where they got American football from because it kind of has history in rugby as well, right? I don't know. I'd have to look into it, Mike. I'm not. I'm not 100 sure. But yeah, I was just you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to ask people to like and subscribe. You did it far better than me. So just listen to Michael. Listen to what I'm saying because we're here. We're here to do a 2025 mock draft. It's way too early. We're we're getting closer. We're just saying the college season is closer than that we maybe wanted to be to ending, which is a shame. But we're going to go through one round of these players, Mike. It is super flex. I can't wait to see who you got in store. Do you want to tell us what do you think about this class in general before we dive in, though? Question marks all across the board. Um, you know, the last few years we've had a lot of good quarterbacks. We've had a lot of good wide receivers, and yep. you'll see from my list, it's not really the case this year. And that's not saying that these guys, you know, you're still going to get your your really high end players at each position. It's just right now there's and we were like we were talking about beforehand. There's still a lot of college football to be played, especially now with the 12 team playoff, um, which helps me as a Penn State fan <laughs> fight on state. Um, but there's this is a really, really good running back class, and there's yeah. a very good potential. Now, obviously, dynasty drafts are always going to be – you're going to see running backs in the first round regardless of draft capital because it's a good landing spot. Landing spot matters, and, you know, a lot yeah. of people say talent over opportunity. If you don't get the opportunity to showcase your talent, it's all moot. Um, but there's going to be, I think, multiple running backs possibly taken in the first round, maybe back end of the first round. Like I could see the mm. a team like the Kansas City Chiefs taking a swing on a, a first round running back this year. Isaiah Pacheco yeah. has been good. Uh, Kareem Hunt's coming and stepped well, but I think that's what the Chiefs need to really bolster up um, their offense because Mahomes Great. has not been playing like Mahomes is here. Rasheed Rice getting hurt. That's a whole other story. Um, the, the biggest question I have about this class as a whole, though, Megs, is even in a super flex draft, is uh, the quarterback position. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. I thought Carson Beck would be the top three. If we would have done this a month ago, Carson Beck probably yeah. would have been top three. Spoiler, didn't make my list. Um, I think he should return. Then you have guys like Drew Aller. Again, as a selfish Penn State fan, kind of hope he comes back for another year. Um, yeah. Quinn Ewers, there's rumors of him possibly transferring, playing another year because Arch Manning's played well. Quinn Ewers got banged yeah. up. He seemed to have some um, injury history as well. Um, but there are a couple quarterbacks on here. I will touch on them. The wide receiver class, not as good as it's been the last couple of years, too. No. We'll get into that. But uh, the running back class, that's the cream of the crop. And, hey, good news for you guys. Some great tight ends coming out this year, too. 
Excellent. Love to hear it. So you're saying that running back class is the real, you know, the real sort of makeup of this 2025 year group. Is that where you're starting at, at your very first pick? Is it a running back at the top? It is, despite the fact that, and, and here's the thing. I feel like people will say Superflex 101 has to be a quarterback. Just pick the best player available, right? But that's it's it's pretty easy. And I'm going with Ashton Genty, and he's a running back from Boise yeah. State. He's really pushing, really pushing to break. I believe it's Herschel Walker's single season record of yardage. Barry, Barry Sanders, maybe Barry Sanders is it? I think it's one of those two guys. One of the two. One of the two. Great collegiate and NFL players. But look, Ashton Genty. Now he hasn't been used much in the receiving game this year. Um, but he's a good receiver. He's just been absolutely pounding the rock. Something about the way when he's in the backfield, he just stands there. You know, he, oh. you know a lot of guys, they're looking around. They're down in their stance. Ashton Gentry, Gentry just stands there like, you could try to stop me, but you're not going to. And Boise State, they're probably going to be in the playoffs as well. I hope yeah. they are because I want to see them play as many games as possible. But Ashton Gentry, extremely versatile. Runs well between the tackles, runs well outside the tackles, and he's an above average pass catcher. Please do not let his receiving stats this year fool you. This guy can catch the rock as dynasty and or any type of fantasy football players. We always look for what's heralded as the bell cow. The NFL is seeming to go away from that. I think Ashton Gentry right now is the closest you can get to a bell cow running back. My deal landing spot for him, I don't always have landing spot for everybody, would be the Dallas Cowboys. They need help yeah. in the running back position. They need a lot of help. Oh, yeah. across they, the board. Yeah, they need a whole lot of help. But it is one of those ones. It just seems like if you're if you're a Cowboys fan, you're looking at where you're going to be in this draft and you're thinking, this is finally the time. Where, I mean, we all thought last year that the Cowboys were going to try and and tree it up and and try and get a running back. They ended up bringing back Zeke Elliott instead, which you know annoyed. I think annoyed a lot of the the Cowboys fans. So I think Ashton Gentry going there, absolutely huge. And Mike, you know the, the most encouraging thing for me about Ashton Gentry is Boise State don't have exactly the strongest strength of schedule, but we've seen whenever he played Oregon, the number one team in the country, he nearly put up two hundred yards of scrimmage. So he's doing it against everybody. And right now, this I just went on ESPN's website just for the projected NFL draft. And right now, yeah. it's the Giants. Um, they could probably get by with Tyrone Tracy for another year. The Patriots, they have Ramondre Stevenson under contract. The Jaguars, um, I think ETN moves on. Actually, ETN is signed for another year, and they have Tank Bigsby there as well. The Titans, maybe they go with Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard again. The Raiders need a quarterback. The Panthers... Yeah. Do not need a running back because they have Chuba Hubbard and they have Jonathan yeah. Brooks. And then yeah. the Browns at seven, maybe they resign Nick Chubb. He's a free agent. They have Jerome yeah. Ford, who's played really well in his absence. And the Dallas Cowboys at eight. So there's a very good possibility that Ashton Genty is the first running board at eight. If this were the draft today, um, the hmm. Dallas Cowboys are an absolute train wreck right now. They could definitely go up um, for between now and the draft in yeah. the draft order. So we'll see what happens there. But Jerry Jones, do the right thing for once. Although you can see behind me, I don't care if the Cowboys are bad. <laughs> I'm fine. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the Cowboys are bad. That's always good for for an Eagles fan. We got we got Janty at one one, absolutely smashing it. Who's then right after him at the one two for you? Before I answer this question, let me ask you one. Do you like Mike Evans? Mike Evans is the guy. Cannot wait to see him come back. Hopefully this week he's going to be fighting so. filthy and healthy to come back from the Bucks. Because I think I know where you're going with this, Mike. Is this is this anything to do with the player at one two? Yeah. If you want a more athletic version of Mike Evans, then Tech McMillan, Tutoria McMillan is his full name. That's wide receiver from Arizona. He's about the same size, little lankier, not as uh, physically imposing mm. as Mike Evans is, but can run every route. Fantastic hands. And you have to look at the fact that he's putting up fantastic numbers at Arizona. Their quarterback yeah. is not the best quarterback. That being said, Mike Evans played with Johnny Manziel, a great collegiate quarterback, mm. a bust in the NFL. Admittedly, he admitted for his own reasons. And you know what? Great on Johnny Manziel for coming back and just kind of owning his, his big L there. Yeah. Um, Ted McMillan, man, right now is a wide receiver one for me. There's another wide receiver I'm going to talk about a little bit who was my wide receiver one but I think it's mm. more scheme oriented. Um, Tet McMillan, if you don't know who he is, watch some film. You are going to love him. His separation is fantastic. And at his size to separate so well, 
it's just it's insane yeah he's he's one of those guys we're just like freak freak out there i keep coming back to this this clip of him he's training indoors and he like goes up to high pot a ball but on the way down he kind of puts it between his legs and brings it like kind of like an nba player does going up to the rim like i I don't know what that. that i'm not i'm not familiar with the nba term for that but you know what i mean he puts it underneath his legs and then catches it right I know what you mean, and you know what? Stuff like that, it, it just shows that these guys are working on ball control, working because yeah. there's going to be times in the college or NFL game where you have to hand fight with a, a defensive back on your way down from catching the ball. So anything that he can do to help that, to me, is just absolutely fantastic. I've got I've got a nickname I'm trying to push for Ted McMillan. Do you want to hear it? I think it's, I think it's pretty good. Tell me what it is because I'll tell you what. You push it. I'm going to push it on my show, too. I'm going to write it down right now. Well, because he's so lanky and his wingspan is so big, how about calling him <laughs> the terror, the terror dactyl? Oh, yeah. Right? I like, I'm like. i writing it down, the terror dactyl. Yeah. I, I think that's quite good. Yeah, hopefully he'll he'll come in. Nothing's ever going to beat Megatron. That's the greatest nickname in NFL history. But we can get, if we can get really terror dactyl up there. That'd be pretty good, right? I love that. Yeah. Yes. Yes, let's do it, Mike. Between you and me, across across the Atlantic, we'll we'll get it sorted, right? So we'll he's in at, at one two. Who's following your wide receiver one at one three? Finally, it's time for a quarterback, and that is Miami quarterback Cam Ward. So look, Cam Ward gets a lot of uh, disdain over here for oh, it's Miami skeet, and this and that, blah blah blah. Mm. There was a game against Virginia Tech a few years ago, a few years ago, a few weeks back. Um, yeah, they were yeah. down. And um, by the way, Virginia Tech, if you want a good um, shot at a day three running back to stash on the bottom end of your roster, there's a guy called Basial Tootin, uh, about 5'9", 200 pounds around there. And he is a hammer, yeah. absolute hammer. He's yeah. a guy that could be a good 1B in an NFL offense. Uh, he's a good receiver, receiving back as well. But we're not talking about him right now. Cam Ward, um, I think a lot of times you see African-American quarterbacks get labeled as a mobile quarterback just because of their skin mm. tone, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Kim Ward can run. Kim Ward looks to pass first. Great arm. And the thing that I like the most about him where I think he's going to be a great NFL quarterback, it's his poise in the pocket. He's back there, and I just very rarely see him panic, which I yeah. think is possible. He's had kind of an unorthodox uh, journey so far. He started at a place called Incarnate Ward. A yeah. word I forget yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah. Then he played at Washington State. Declared for the draft, and there is a committee that will tell you, um, or he said he was going to declare, and I guess he didn't. But there's a committee that will tell you what your draft capital looks like over here. Um, and then he went to Miami instead of going into the draft, which I think was the right move. He's lighting it up mm-hmm. at Miami. Miami's another team that should be in the collegiate playoffs. So excited to see him. Uh, Cam Ward, my first quarterback off the board in a super flex. We're at the third pick. Insane, man. Yeah, he is someone that this year I sort of got my own little like tracking system for for how players are producing and doing this year. And Cam Ward is so far my number number two player just behind Ashton Janty. In terms of performance this year alone, as we know, Ted McMillan kind of been double and triple covered a lot of the games, so it's hard for him to, to break yeah. out a lot of the time. I was super high on Cam Ward, but I gotta tell you, Mike, last week I had my good friend Alex on on the show, and he said, "But what about his schedule? What about his strength of opponents?" I'm like, "What do you mean?" He went, "Look at the teams he's played. He's like, he's crushing Ball State. He's crushing these sort of low level teams. And then you look who he's played. Is Cal their best win? Is that the team you think is maybe their best win?" Um, I, I actually think the Virginia Tech game was his best okay. win because I understand yeah. where Alex is coming from with that. Look at who he's played. But when you're playing your conference opponent, he's in the ACC, you're going to get a team's best shot. And I'm just bringing up his game logs from 2024 right here because they were down in that Virginia yeah. Tech game. And um, he came back to win that game. He was 24 of 38 for 343 yards, four touchdowns and two picks. But he did also have 10 rushes for 57 yards and one touchdown. They used Mason like 57 yards. Let's not forget in the college game, when you get sacked, yeah. they deduct from your rushing totals mm-hmm. as well. Um, right now, also, he leads all of college football in both passing yards and passing touchdowns. He's 3,494 yards and 32 passing touchdowns to only six interceptions. 
Now, when you go on, I use sportsreference.com. They have an NFL side. They have a college side. It's a fantastic mm-hmm. site for stats. Um, they only have three seasons on here, two at Washington State, uh, one at Miami. Incarnate Ward was, um, they're like an FCS school. So you would have okay. to go back and look. You'd have to just go right to their website and get his stats off there. Mm-hmm. I don't know why sports reference doesn't include that because it's still college football. I know it's a lower yeah. level, but still, um, I mean, through three seasons, <laughs> 10,462 yards, 80 touchdowns and 22 picks, man. That's just yeah. insanity. Insane. For a yeah. I love Cam. Moore. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think he's, he's going to be able to, if, if Miami and they should get there, I can't wait to see what he does in the playoffs because I think then they're really going to get a stiff test. And I do think that he's definitely up for it. And I love his position here at at one, three, four, sure, Mike. And we're gonna also, we're gonna roll on. Oh, sorry, go can on. I just say one thing real quick? His teammate Xavier Restrepo uh, projects Ooh. to be a slot receiver in the NFL. Yeah, um, but here's a guy you could probably get in the second round of your drafts. And I think wherever he goes, he is basically everything we wanted Roman Wilson to be last year. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a big, big advocate of Xavier Restrepo. I think it. I said before a few weeks ago. I said there's a chance that he could sneak his way up to the back end of the first round if he if he keeps going. Greatest receiver in Miami Hurricanes history. I think he's broken every record. Yeah, and he's better than guys in the back end of the first round. Where this past year, like um, Xavier Leggett and uh, mm-hmm. with Ricky Pearsall as well. Yeah. So I would put him above those two guys who were late first round draft picks in the NFL draft. Yeah, absolutely agreed. So his teammate Cam Ward was locked in at 1-3. Who's following up at 1-4? My former wide receiver one, that's Luther Burden from Missouri. We were talking before, Ed. I like Brady Cook a little bit. Probably not going to be an NFL starter, but hey, you never know. Mm -hmm. Um, Aiden O'Connell started some games for the Las Vegas Raiders. Still weird saying Las Vegas. I should be saying Oakland Mm -hmm. Raiders, just like I should be saying San Diego Chargers. But look, Luther Burden... I think is unfortunately going to be a victim of scheme here. And this Mm -hmm. is a guy's possibility that maybe he stays in college and he transfers somewhere else. Um, You know, he could stay in the SEC, he could go to Alabama, he could go to Georgia, he could go to LSU and he could be a starting wide receiver right away and just absolutely light it up. They're playing him really close to the line of scrimmage. They're playing him in the slot a lot, but Luther Burden can play every position and he Mm -hmm. can expect at it he's rangy he's athletic and pretty good after the catch as well i love me some luther burden so this is a guy right here where if his value falls to you in drafts you have to scoop him up even if it's in the middle of the first round i think wherever he goes in the nfl if he comes out this year he's going to be absolutely fantastic every single person when you bring up luther burden the the first name that comes out of their mouth is usually debo samuel i don't think he's quite as physical as him but i can kind of I see agree. it right i i can i understand the comp i don't necessarily agree with it i think debo was much more physical and he was used as a runner a lot as well that's not mm-hmm. really luther burden's game but i can understand the comp yeah he's still got time obviously we kind of forget sometimes about these these players that they are still kids and they they can still like some of them are still growing so he could get there to the point where he is a physical monster like like debo but yeah, he's he's definitely someone you should be taking a chance on. And to be honest with you, because he has, you know, quote unquote underperformed this year, I really hope he slips in drafts because I'd love to pick him up, you know, a little bit later on. That'll be that'll be great for my dynasty teams. Yeah, I'll take him for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So he's he's locked in at one four. Who's following at the one five for you? If you wanted to switch 1-4 one, and 1-5 one, for you guys at home watching, um, you could because Ohio hmm. State wide receiver Emeka Egbuka is probably a safer pick. Now, he came back, it was had kind of an injury plagued last year. Uh, a lot of mm-hmm. people projecting him to just be a slot only guy in the NFL, but make no mistake about it, he can play inside, he can play outside. Savvy route runner, which most Ohio State wide receivers are. Fantastic hands and really good separation underneath as well, which would be important. When uh, you know you're playing against some of these nickelbacks in the NFL, that just a lot of these uh, nickel corners, they really can shut a wide receiver down. So I like yeah. Amica, Amica. I don't know if it's Amica or Amica. I'm not really sure how to say it. Not sure. Um, yeah. I'm an old guy from Pennsylvania, so we have a problem uh, pronouncing things properly sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but this guy should be a locked in first round dynasty wide receiver for sure. He probably would have been back end last year, even if mm-hmm. had he declared. But uh, we're bumping him up because, you know, the NFL doesn't really care about age as much anymore. 
the NFL really wants, only wants to pay you, play you, sorry, pay you for one contract anyway. So, you know, I think he's uh, 22, 23, which still in the grand scheme of things, not that old. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I think he's been around in college so long that people are almost thinking that he's part of the furniture over at Ohio State and kind of forgetting that no, he's actually a really, really good player. And there's been so many eyes on on Jeremiah Smith this year, like the freshman who's just I mean, an absolute freak. That I think people are sleeping a little bit on Ibuka, so I'm really pleased to see him ranked all the way up here at one five because he just seems like somebody I know. A lot of the times, rookies can come in and struggle to adapt to life at the NFL. I think Ibuka is going to hit the ground running, and I don't really see him struggling to to fit into a roster, no matter where he goes. Lazy comp, I could see him having kind of like a JSN type deal where he's behind two good wide receivers, and it takes him a little yeah. bit of time. But the the good thing about that is, um, if you can't get him where you want in the draft, people are going to get down because they're not seeing the production they want right away, and you could acquire him cheaply later. Yeah, I know the Falcons have been using Darnell Mooney, but I, I like the Falcons for for Emeka Igbuka. I think him and Drake London fantastic. would pair up quite nice, right? Yeah, so That'd be great, yeah. he's he's got a lot of places he he would come in and fit in, but he's looking great at one oh five. And who's following him? We spoke about this running back class being epic. We've only seen Ashley Janty come off the board. Are you going back to running backs now? It's almost like you read my mind. So let's talk about one of my favorite players in this draft. And if anyone's familiar with North Carolina, you would have known and heard about a player called Omarion Hampton. Yeah. Omarion Hampton is nothing short of a bulldozer out there. He is big. He's physical. But he's a really good receiving back as well. Um, there's something just violent about the way he runs the football. Yeah. Again, a guy who could be a three-down back in the NFL. Not that that happens as much anymore. Uh, I just yeah. love his vision. He could work on his patience a little bit more. He tries to hit the hole as fast as he can every single time. That will have to be coached out of him, and it can. Guys get coached up in the NFL too. Um, Omari and Hampton could be a three-down back at the 106, depending on landing spot, of course. I mean, look, there's teams out there that need running backs. Um, the Packers, the Vikings, two names are ripping off right there. They got aging running backs. Uh, the Raiders mm. need a running back. So he could come in and be a starter day one. Do you think he's the kind of running back that you think could sneak to the back end of round one, or do you think he'll be a dead or a second round guy? I think he could. And but here's the thing, too. We're also seeing, you know, if we have day three running backs, that's not as big of a death sentence as it used no. to be. I actually made a note um in the offseason because this will take a little bit more time to put together. So in the summer. Nate and I on uh, the pod and, and YouTube channel, we're going to do a study of day three running backs because Nate's uh, whole synopsis was never day three running backs. But we've seen guys, uh, Braylon Allen's had some success this year. And I, I yeah. went through a whole theory of how Braylon Allen could be the team starting running back within a year or two, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Kyron Williams is another prime example of that. Yeah. Uh, Zamir White had every opportunity this year. Unfortunately, he didn't mm -hmm. do anything with it. We've seen day three running backs come in and they've been very, very good for you. Elijah Mitchell a couple years ago until he got hurt and they traded yes, CMC. Yes. Uh, Jordan Mason, I believe, was a six-round draft pick or even possibly – I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, mm -hmm. These guys are important, but I don't think O'Marion Hampton's going to be on the board day three. He's at worst a third-round draft pick. Yeah, I, I would agree with you as well. You're right. Bulldozer, oh. I couldn't have put it any better. Sorry, Michael. Chuba Hubbard was a fourth-round draft pick too, and – if you have two Bobber yeah. on your team, you're pretty happy about it right now. You love it. Pacheco, who we spoke about earlier, right? Another guy, Leo Ryan guy, guy, right? Seventh round yeah. draft pick out of Rutgers. I'm about an hour and a half away from Rutgers. Rutgers have a good running back this year, do they? Is it Rutgers have a good running back this yeah, year? Yeah, I can't remember his name right now. Um, also, Piscataway, New Jersey is where Rutgers is playing football. It's a nice little town. Drove through, drove through there a few times. Yeah. Shot up, shot up, Piscataway, New Jersey. So we got, we got our second, uh, second running back off the board there with the great Omarion Hampton, who's following him at one seven. I'm not a fan. However, we do have to consider what we think the NFL is going to think about these guys. And like I try to tell everybody okay. on my channel, um, what we think about a player doesn't matter. What does matter is what the NFL thinks about a player. And that's why I'm going with yes. Colorado quarterback Shador Sanders. Now, Colorado will be in the college football playoff. I'm fairly certain of that. Colorado, I think, could be a one-and-done team. 
they have Travis mm -hmm. Hunter. And look, just to let you guys know, I did not put Travis Hunter on this list. I don't know if he's going to be a wide receiver or a defensive back. That's why. Fair. And with the uncertainty until I know, I'm just planning on excluding him. Um, That's fair. But aside, aside from Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders, this is a team that really struggles to run the football. And you have to run the football well yeah. to be successful in college football. And as the Eagles are showing this year, you can run the football and be successful in the NFL as well, too. Running backs matter, everybody. So do tight ends. We'll talk about yeah. that a little bit. But Shador Sanders, um, not as mobile as I'd like to see him be. And you would think being Deion mm -hmm. Sanders, kid. Deion Sanders yeah. can fly around the field. <laughs> he, he He's okay. Um, I think his his pocket awareness is pretty good. Um, but I don't think – I think he processes well. I'd love to see more mobility. I'd love to see more running from Shador Sanders. But from the quarterback standpoint, there are some issues I feel like with his personality, kind of throwing Colorado's offensive line under the bus after the game. You can't do that. If you want to do it in the locker room and say, I need you guys to step it up, completely understood. Don't do it to the media. And that's something that will have to be coached out of him. There is this theory right now running around the NFL circles that I see. The Cowboys are going to fire Mike McCarthy. They're going to hire uh, uh, Deion Sanders and then draft Shador Sanders, let him sit for a year behind Dak and then trade Dak. That's interesting. I don't know if it really come to fruition. I think if they did that, Dak would immediately request a trade, which yeah. would be good for him because he's going to go somewhere. He's going to be a starting quarterback. So Dak is a really good buy now, buy low for me right now. If you can, the guy's going to be a starter somewhere next year. Uh, but Shador Sanders is my 107. I don't have to love it, but got to think of what the NFL thinks of him. I think they do think pretty highly of him right now. Yeah, I think you're. I think they see a lot of these owners as well. They'll probably see dollar signs with Shadur Sanders as well. The they amount will. of jerseys that guy's going to sell going to be incredible. And you, you kind of read my mind there. I was going to ask you, do you think him and his dad are a bit of a package deal in the NFL? Wherever he goes, he's going to go. But I think, I mean, I know Dion. He's done a good job. It's way too soon for him to be an NFL head coach, surely. Yeah, I mean, he played. Uh, what was it? Jackson State, he coached there for a while, and he's been at uh, Colorado for, I think, this is his second year, second or third year, something like that. But, hey, you never know. Look, Doug Peterson took the Eagles to the Super Bowl in two years, and he only ever head coached at high school, the high school football level. So we've seen it happen before. Is it unlikely? Yes. Is it possible with the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, it's very possible. They <laughs> Jerry Jones loves the lineage of that team, and hey, rightfully so. But, you know, don't embrace it too much. Like, when you bring back guys like Zeke, you know, they need a GM down there, not Jerry Jones. Yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen some people online saying that the Cowboys are going to – they're going to take the on, they're going to take Shadur, they're going to trade it up, they're also going to take Jonty. It's like, we're not playing Madden here, guys. Can we please – please count Yeah, down I, I don't know. I mean, the only way that they can really do that is if uh, Sanders fell into the second round. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. but still, it would be. If you're going to do that, then I think you should sign a free agent running back because then, you know, you're going to have that year where the, I don't think you're going to be very good. So you would just be wasting a year of Ashton Genty's career. Then in that case, you use that pick on Shador Sanders. Yeah, absolutely agreed. So. I like I like that the prospects you don't absolutely love you shouldn't just completely write them off you should yeah listen listen to what everyone else around us is saying yeah. you've done that with with Sanders at, at one seven who's right after him then at one eight tight ends matter I'm gonna yeah. talk about my tight end one and this is not because of my love of Penn State but Tyler Warren tight end mm -hmm. from Penn State and look everyone's saying Colston Loveland. At this time last mm -hmm. year, I would have said Ben Yurisek out of Georgia, who I still think is going to be a really good NFL tight end. Uh, Georgia just not really throwing to the tight ends a lot. And that's not just mm -hmm. him. That's Oscar Delp as well. Um, but, look, Tyler Warren can do everything. He's a fantastic receiver. He separates well. Hands like glue. They use him in the Wildcat. They use him as a running back. So this is a guy that you can – oh, my God, I sound like Chris Collinsworth right now. Gross. <laughs> you can move him all over the place. He's extremely versatile, which – we don't see a lot from the tight yeah. end position. Everyone loved the versatility of Ben Sinnott last year. This is Ben Sinnott on steroids. I think he could be, I don't want to say the next Brock Bowers because what Brock Bowers has done is nothing short of amazing. Uh, um, yeah. But maybe like Brock Bowers light, where he could come in as a rookie, take a few weeks to get acclimated, and then just absolutely catch fire. I mean, there's a lot of teams that could use a tight end upgrade as well. So Tyler Warren, my tight end one right now, no disrespect to Colston Loveland, 
by any means. I like what he brings to the table as well. Uh, but Tyler Warren's my guy here at one eight. Yeah, Tyler Warren, just one of the one of the highlights for for Penn State, and he's kind of I've been saying now for the last two years, and it's one of it's one of the things I think I can I can kind of pat myself on the back for a little bit, Mike. I've been talking about the whole rookie tight ends don't produce is a complete myth that has kind of been spread around for a long time. I think this year yeah. that's been finally put to bed. So do you think Warren would be the kind of guy that can come in and if he does find the right spot, can produce just right away in year one? Yeah, absolutely. I really do. And, uh, I mean, there's going to be some teams that need tight ends too. I mean, yeah. teams that have guys under contract, if it's in the back end of their contract, you know, that's, that, that can be – the GMs know how to figure that out really, really easy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Warren is locked in as your number one tight end at one. Yeah, yeah. who knows? Maybe we'll see another tight end in the first round. I'm not sure, but let's see who we got at one nine to start with. All right, so let's talk about another running back. I thought it was foolish for him to transfer from the SEC to the Big Ten. That's Ohio State running back Quinshawn Judkins. No disrespect to Travion Henderson. Let me tell you about what makes him better than Travion Henderson. Okay. Spoiler, Travion Henderson does not make my list because Quinchon Judkins is there. Quinchon mm-hmm. Judkins can do everything that Travion Henderson could do. He is an above-average mm-hmm. receiving back, but where I think he excels is he is better between the tackles and he is a much more physical runner. Travion Henderson, faster, but kind of you got to get him outside a little bit to get a full head of steam. So Quinchon Judkins to me projects as a better starting NFL running back than Trayvon Henderson does. Um, I mean, I, I said it was foolish. I could pull up his stats here real quick. Now, I do think that Quinchon Judkins, had he stayed at Ole Miss, would have still had high draft capital. Nate, my co-host at the Dynasty Room, was telling me that there was some locker room stuff going on. And, you know, mm. I try not to – to really put too much into that. These are college kids. You know what I mean? Your college athletes, let's talk about football here for a second. These are guys that are hitting each other all day, pushing each other around. Of course, there's going to be problems going on. There's a lot of testosterone in that locker room. Um, So he led the SEC in rushing as a freshman, all right, with 1,567 yards and 274 carries. And this year, 121 carries, 723 yards. So he's averaging six yards a carry. He also has eight rushing touchdowns, and that's splitting time with Travion Henderson. The dude's good. And his yeah. second year at Ole Miss, too, 1,158 yards and 15 touchdowns. The 15 touchdowns led the SEC, which is considered the best division mm-hmm. in college football. Although this year it seems to be leaning the Big Ten a little bit. Um, so Quinchon Judkins let his down year at Ohio State be beneficial for you. I think he's another guy that could, maybe not a day one starter. Maybe they have a, an aging vet in front of him, you know, kind of yeah. like a Raheem Mostert, Devon A. Chan situation, although Devon A. Chan mm. a much different running back than Quinchon Judkins. Um, but he's a guy that I, I want him on as many rosters as possible. Yeah, I think he's the kind of guy that we're like not seeing what his true ceiling is at the minute even because of Trevion Henderson being there. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, there's a little bit of give take as well because what's happening is you're not getting a situation like you had with with Najee Harris, for example, who came out of college like just already. So like it just had almost no tread left on his tires. I think that's going to be beneficial for Judkins. He's going to get a bit of a lighter schedule. He's going to come in. And he's going to be able to produce, hopefully, a little bit better right off the bat and, and have a slightly longer career because of it. And also, uh, Trevion Henderson has 662 yards on 89 carries. He's averaging 7.4 yards per carry, too. So this is a very, very efficient and effective backfield for Ohio State. They're rolling with the two running back set. It's working for them. I hate Ohio State, by the way. <laughs> but I, I cannot ignore the fact that they put out fantastic NFL prospects. And if you're an Ohio State fan, why do you hate Ryan Day so much? The guy loses <laughs> maybe one game a year. Like, yeah, chill, chill, because the grass is not always greener. Absolutely. And last thing on John Kids, I've had five. This is my fifth, maybe sixth. I think fifth one of these, Mike. Every single guest so far has put Judkins over Henderson, even though they've always been quite close. Do you think there's one thing in particular that that separates Judkins that has made it that every single person prefers him? Yeah, it's the ability to run through the line of scrimmage and the physicality. 
that is what makes a better running back to me. And I'll give you a good example. Um, the duo of Penn State running backs, and neither of these guys made my list. That doesn't mean I don't like mm-hmm. them. You have Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen. Nicholas Singleton was the five-star recruit. I think he was maybe four or five-star. And is he more athletic? Is he more dynamic? Yes. However, I think Katron Allen has a better possibility of being a better NFL mm-hmm. prospect because of the fact that he's not as flashy, more physical, better between the tackles, and an above average wide receiver as well. There are times at the running back position where, you know, teams don't want necessarily the boomer bust guy. They want the guy like, hey, it's third and one. You're getting me four yards. That's what I need. And that's yeah. where I think guys like Quinchon Judkins and Katron Allen have the leg up over the flashier players. Yeah, absolutely well put indeed. So that finishes up on one nine. Only got a few picks left, only three picks left, starting with one ten, Mike. All right, so let's go back to the SEC and let's talk about a quarterback, and that's Alabama quarterback Jalen Milrow. So if you're a Bama fan, you know, maybe you don't like Kalen DeBoer as much, but we cannot ignore the fact that Kalen DeBoer took Michael Penix from a guy who was injury prone. And a lot of people said, this guy's never playing in the NFL. He was a first round draft pick. Should he have been a first round draft pick? Probably not. That was the Falcons doing Falcon things. You know, Kirk Cousins coming (laughs) off that injury looks fine, by the way, if I may say so myself, except for that game against Denver last week. But uh, Jalen McMillrow, I think he's played better under Kalen DeBoer than he did under uh, Nick Saban. You know, he's got a really good arm. He seems to be processing well, very, very mobile, a great running quarterback, but not just always looking to run. He wants to pass first. Now, I don't necessarily think he's going to be a first-round draft pick. I think he could be a second-round draft pick, and that's fine. Jalen Hurts was a second-round draft pick. Derek Carr was a second-round draft pick. So not getting drafted in the first Brock Purdy, seventh-round draft pick, Mr. Irrelevant, uh, who is out this week, by the way. Um, Yeah which screws me in a couple leagues. (laughs) So not being a first-round draft pick is not a death sentence at the quarterback, especially when you're as talented as Jalen Milrow. I don't know if Jalen Milrow has any college eligibility left. I could find out for you right now. It looks like – so he is – he'll be a senior next year. He redshirted his freshman year. He could come back. I think if he has the Mm -hmm. potential to – because the 2026 quarterback class looks even worse than this one right now. Um, I think if he can come back, he should. Also, SEC teams, stop scheduling games like Alabama versus Mercer in November. What are we doing? That's a September game. Stop yeah. it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely agree with you on the last one. Uh, Jalen Milrow, do you want to hear my bold? I don't know if it's a bold take, but here's something that I think yeah. might happen with Jalen Milrow. Okay. The fastest, the fastest forty time by a quarterback in combine history is Michael Vick at four point three three seconds. I think Jalen Monroe beats that time. Do you think so? Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's bigger than Michael Vick too. Yeah, um, he's, he's big. six two two oh one. I don't hate it. And there's another guy too. If you wanna, if you wanna play in any Devi or C to C leagues, if he's available, Lenora Sellers from Ooh. South Carolina. Nate made a really good comp for him. Anthony Richardson that can throw the ball. <laughs> <Accurately>. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. accurate Anthony Richardson was his comp for Lenora Sellers. He's only a sophomore. Uh, that's a guy I like a lot. Maybe Anthony Richardson needs those goggles that Sellers has, right? Maybe that's been the problem the whole time. He just can't see. Yeah, yeah maybe. Or maybe he needs some LASIK like Jamison Williams got. Jamis Winston. I keep calling Jamis Winston Jamison Williams. God, I hate being old. <laughs> <laughs> James, that it's actually snowing today in Scotland, so my whole timeline is filled with Jameis Winston being happy about the snow like everywhere now because it's snowing outside here. It snowed here yesterday a little bit too. Um, not enough to do anything, but our first one of the year, my daughter was thrilled. Amazing, yeah. I'm 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 it's having nice. it inside day. I'm not I'm not doing too much today. I'll I'll be chilling inside. Not it's not enough to go outside and actually do anything. It's it's kind of that that crappy stage where you can't do too much. Yeah, you're right. It's it's not yeah. great, but Milro yeah. there. I just with Jalen Miller, last thing in him, if he like ties it all together and it's always the same with these incredible athletes at a quarterback, his ceiling is absolutely huge for fantasy football, right? Through the roof. Through the roof. What he could do, I mean he's got a great arm, and what he could do running the football too. Yeah. Yeah, for he's sure. uh, he's definitely yeah, he's one of, you got it you got to if you play in multiple leagues. 
and he comes out to see you got to get one of him just in case like it, it could blow up in your face but you got to get one because you don't want to miss out on, on a talent of that like, sure. could could change your roster and he's he's going at 110 at the minute that seems about right for him so that's a great great way to take your team from almost getting the championship and taking it over the line and if you're at 111 you keep second place probably unless you trade it in for it so who who are you giving to this team we're going to iowa Iowa actually being Ooh. good offensively. Caleb Johnson, that's a running back Yo, right there. So look, God Caleb Johnson. Mike, I'm anno- I'm, I got to cut you off. I'm annoyed. <laughs> no, it's a why. You know why? Before I started these way too early mock drafts, I was like, I've got a sleeper. No one's talking about this guy. Caleb Johnson looks unbelievable. <laughs> every, every damn person's mentioned Caleb Johnson. I'm furious. I thought I was going to get him in the second and third round. It's not happening. He's too good, right? He he is too good. Yeah, that's that's the problem. And Caleb Johnson is six foot two hundred twenty five pounds. So you want to talk about physicality? He's a well balanced player. Now Caleb Johnson does have you know one knock, but that's okay because the NFL they want their running backs to play in a ten yard window. Okay, mm-hmm. he does not have elite long speed, but look, that's fine. Caleb Johnson right now on the season has 1,328 yards. That leads the Big Ten. He has 20 touchdowns. So, unfortunately, Mags, when you do that in the Big Ten at Iowa, you're not going to be a sleeper for very, very long. I'm sorry, my friend. He's going to go in the back end of the first round. I think he's going to get great uh, draft capital landing spot. I brought up his uh, his profile on NFLDraftBuzz.com. Kind of a really cool mm. website that I've started looking at a little bit more. It's a good site. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. Uh, and they see the things that I do: patient, solid hands out of the backfield, and then the uh, weaknesses. I talked about the the long speed, not great. Uh, pass protection technique needs refinement. You know, here's the thing about that. In college, they don't really coach that very well. I'll give you a good example. Miles Sanders could not pass block to save mm. his life when he came out of Penn State. He learned how to do it pretty well. And a basic route tree out of the backfield, that's the Iowa offense. Basic ass offense. That's what <laughs> Iowa does. I mean, we're in 2024. Iowa's offense is in 1974. Okay. Yeah. So, and he does run a little bit high, you know, a little high mm-hmm. and tight running but adrian peterson did it and was one of the best running backs in nfl history so that's not a that trip yeah. to me that they have it as a knock to me that's just something that i i notice with him i don't knock players for that mm-hmm. you know, high pad yeah. level um especially when you're six foot 225 you could absorb those hits too and look linebackers aren't as big as they used to be there's no levon kirkland's mm-hmm. out there murdering people over the middle of the field there's no jeremiah trotter seniors out there anymore just absolutely mauling people. No Ray Lewis's anymore. Yeah. Linebackers are different. They're faster, they're smaller, they're more hybrid. So that does not concern me as much. Yeah, and it's not like it's held him back this year, right? Look at the stats he's putting up. He's doing absolutely just fine. So yeah, Caleb Johnson. I am I am obviously gutted he's not going to be a sleeper, but at the same time, I'm also happy for him as well. That guy, that guy deserves to be right up there. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's see here. His best game came against Minnesota this year. 21 carries, 206 yards. He averaged 9.8 yards a carry and three touchdowns. Um, His worst game was against UCLA, which, you know, weird. 18 for 49 and a touchdown. He scored at least one touchdown in every game. Yeah. You know, and Iowa State, that's a big rivalry. Iowa, Iowa State, Mm -hmm. 187 yards. Uh, We'll discredit the Troy game. But against Ohio State, who has a good defense, 86 yards on 15 carries, he averaged 5.7 yards a carry and a touchdown. So, yeah. you know, still looking pretty good despite Absolutely. the competition. Yeah, and a great guy to pick up at the back end of the first four, sure. And there's there's one more guy to talk about in the first round. I'm sure it's going to be a good one, Mike. Who have you got? Well, you're right. That's Trey Harris from Ole Miss. Um, banged up right now. I do believe he might still be injured. He is a senior. Um, he started at Louisiana Tech, I believe. Louisiana Tech, Louisiana State, Louisiana. Somewhere in Cajun Central down in the yeah. southern part of the United States. Uh, but this is a very, very versatile guy. He's an outside wide receiver, which you know yep. he's projected yep. as an outside wide receiver too, which is really important. Very, very big catch radius as well. He's six foot three, 210 pounds. Um, these bigger wide receivers kind of coming back in the style in the NFL, yeah, which, which yeah. I like to see. I like to see yeah. that. You know what I mean? These guys on the outside that can manipulate and maul a smaller defensive back and, and get up there and get the ball. I kind of like to see that. Um, ball tracking is really good and not the best separator. I did notice as well, 
But, um, you know, working with an NFL trainer, get a little quicker. I'm not too worried about that. I think he can do it at the NFL level. Is there any concern about him that he doesn't have like the the best the biggest knock I've seen him is he doesn't have the best sort of right tree out there that he is sort of just depends a lot on his physicality and I think maybe we just have PTSD from Troy Franklin last year and what kind of happened yeah, with him? I, I get that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a comp here. I think that's the Ole Miss thing because DK Metcalf was yeah. heralded as a guy that had a route branch, if you recall. He just ran straight. So <laughs> I personally think that's just the way Ole Miss dials yeah. up their offense. Lane Kiffin says, you do this well, you're going to do this all the time. All right, so kind of a lazy comp just because of the college there, but the, I just think it's an Ole Miss thing. And I also think yeah. that that's why um, why Matt Corral is not a high draft pick because of the type of offense that they play. Although they do have um, – why can't I think of their quarterback's name right now? Oh, Jackson Dart. Yeah. Jackson Dart. I think um, – I don't have yeah. him on here. I think he's probably a day two pick, but I think he could be a decent NFL prospect too, depending on where he goes if he gets some opportunity. I like Jackson Dart a little bit. Well, you're you're a big Eagles guy. Do you see Jalen Hurts in his game? Because I see a lot of Jalen Hurts in Jackson Dart's game. Yeah, I don't think uh, Jackson Dart's as physical as Jalen Hurts. Mm. Um I think he might read the field a little bit better. My my one knock right now in Jalen Hurts is not using the middle of the field. But I do listen to a podcast called the Eagle Eye Podcast. If you are an Eagles fan overseas, there are two uh, beat writers for NBC Sports here and there in Philadelphia. I don't live in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, but they think part of the problem with Jalen Hurts not seeing the middle of the field is because our offensive guards are so tall. Landon Dickerson is hmm. 6'5", yeah. and Kyle Beckton, I think, is 6'5", 6'6". So they think that with Jalen Hurts only being 6'1", it might be hard for him to really physically see Fair. the center of the field very well, which mm-hmm. is possible. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And and with that, Mike, we're, we're at the end of the first round. We've chatted through all of these prospects. It looks like a really, really good class. Mike, before, before you go, is there any other players like, damn it, I really wish I got a little a little chance to to chat about this guy or anyone you think's maybe going under the radar, for example. So what I what we do on our Patreon is Nate and I do a show every week. It's called Rewind After Dark, and then he does the Debbie Player of the Week, and I do the Small School Big Player of the Week. So can I throw out nice. a few names yeah. that are smaller school guys who I think have a chance to ascend in the draft? Let's do it. Let's go to the West Coast. Let's talk about San Jose State wide receiver Nick Nash. All this guy has done is just put up absolute numbers. I think he could be a day three guy. Um, I love him. There's a tight end from Bowling Green. I don't know if he's coming or going, you know, coming out of the draft or going to stay back in college. Harold Fannin Jr., um, not the biggest guy, but he can kind of be moved around a little bit, split him out wide some, be great underneath. Uh, I just had him. And there's another guy I like too. Now, this is for you Devi and C2C guys. There's a Tulsa wide receiver named Joseph Williams, who I was very impressed with the game that he had this past week. Unfortunately, it was lost. But um, one of the criteria I look for is, did you help your team win the game when it was necessary? Or did you help keep your team in the game and a loss? He had three touchdowns in his last game. Um, so Joseph Williams is a guy that I like too. There's another guy as well, kind of falling off a little bit in the later part of the season. Uh, NIU, which is Northern Illinois University, they have a running back called Antario Brown, and he's a bruiser. So he's a, like, a day three guy, kind of a nice little stash there for you. Um, but I think regardless of the fact that he's fallen off, I think when he tests or if he goes to the senior bowl, I think the NFL will like him. And guys, Senior Bowl players matter, too, because there's a lot of guys who popped at the Senior Bowl Yeah, that end up having decent NFL careers. So that's all I got for you there. Um, yeah, I and, got a you know, couple of the names there, Mike. Uh, somewhere, yeah. somewhere listening, Phil from the Fantasy Wildcard Debbie team is smiling. He named off we, – we've, we've dubbed him hot and spicy Nick Nash because there's a flavor of crisps over here called Nash. called Nick Nacks, and they've got a hot and spicy <laughs> flavor. So hot and, hot and spicy okay. Nick Nash is is a favorite over here at the Dynasty Hot Seat already. And and who was the who was the, bull, who was the tight end again? I, I'm blanking on his name. He Harold was another one Phil Fannin brought up. Jr. Yeah, Harold Fannin, Fannin is – Yeah. He's so productive too. It's insane. Yeah. And yeah, this is with Bowling Green – well, the, the, pro- the only thing that I have, the only problem I have is not a problem I have. It's a problem I think the community will have about Harold Fannin. It'll be, 
oh, it's Bowling Green, they're in the MAC. Look at their strength of competition, but he is their best receiver as a whole, mm-hmm. and they're not a very good passing team. And if you look at the numbers he puts up, it transcends what Bowling Green does as a whole. All right, so maybe he stays. Yeah. Maybe he transfers up. We love the transfer up. I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, I like these smaller school prospects because, you know, one of the approaches I take to dynasty fantasy football is you have to look for, you look for what I call it victory at every position. So if I'm playing Mm -hmm. Mags this week, Mags are over here, I'm over here. How can I beat you at the quarterback position? How can I beat you at the running back position? Wide receiver, tight end, right? You, you, every individual lineup setting is a game in itself. I have to try yeah, to win yeah. every game. So how can I help win two years down the road in the fourth and fifth rounds of my rookie draft? That's knowing guys that nobody's talking about, which is why I took so many Elijah Mitchell shares a few years ago when he was drafted in the yeah. sixth round. And then I traded him and I used him to upgrade. So even if these guys never start a game for you, but you turn them into something that helps you elevate your team as a whole. It's important to know these guys. I talked about Basial Tootin before from Virginia Tech. I think he yeah, could be a day yep. three running back. Th- these guys are they're important. And if you look, I'll tell you about my guys last year. Some of these guys ended up being something that we've heard about. Uh, Kobe Hudson is a guy from UCF I've been a fan of for quite mm-hmm. a long time now. Um, Kamani Vidal was one of my school, small school big players a week. He was a late draft riser for some people. Uh, let's see. There's another guy that I had here too. Oh, two years ago, I didn't have him on the lift. Carson Steele was my guy when he was with Ball State. Yes. He came back and played another year. But remember the waiver wire scrambling for Carson Steele a few weeks back? So these are Luke McCaffrey was another guy I had too. Um, there's a guy too. He was with New Mexico. He's with Arizona now. His name is Corey Krosky Merritt. He has eligibility concerns, Ooh. which is why he hasn't been playing. But uh, 5'11, 210 pounds. He's an absolute hammer at the running back position. So uh, just some guys that you can kind of keep in the back of your brain. And there's another guy too. I like Mario Anderson jr. From Memphis. I don't know what his eligibility is, um, Mm. but yeah. Absolutely. Love you mentioned UCF there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my stamp up because I had to replace my late round sleeper since, since Keel Johnson did too well. Give me some RJ Harvey out of UCF. I'm I'm really liking what I yeah. see from that guy. RJ Harvey has been really productive too. And, and UCF has kind of had some issues with their quarterback position. I was supposed to be, I think, KJ Jefferson, but he got banged mm-hmm. up. He might they're saying that he might come back for another year. I don't I don't know. He maybe he just doesn't have it. Maybe, yeah, exactly. Maybe maybe not, but someone who does have it. Is Michael Bauer can from I, the Rewind team, of course. Yes, go ahead, Mike. Can I just say one last thing? You got to buy back in on Raheem Sanders in South Carolina. Um, he looks much better yeah. than he did at Arkansas. And I can tell mm-hmm. you why. This is why I love doing a podcast with Nate, because he finds these gems that I can't find. Supposedly, the Arkansas coaching staff wanted him to put on weight, which is why he did was not the rocket last year, why he looks so sluggish. Uh, he slimmed down about 20 pounds. He looks fantastic this year yeah yeah especially the last couple of weeks he's really really coming on and seems to have yeah. returned back to back to old rocket form so he could be someone that sneaks into the, the, the first sure. this is still way too early right this is this mm-hmm. is a guy that could end up being picked at the back end of the first but when it's all said and done right yeah for sure yeah absolutely and mike unfortunately that does bring us to the end of the show once again, just thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for listening. If you've not already, you got to like, you got to subscribe, you got to do all that good stuff. And of course, make sure you check out everything that Mike's doing. Can you just remind everyone where can they find all your great work, Mike? Of course, I'm on uh, X, I guess it's called now, at Rewind CEO. Yeah. You can follow the show at Dynasty Rewind. We got uh, X, we have Instagram, we have a Facebook page you could like as well. I think we have a TikTok. I don't know. I don't handle the social media because I don't have time for that. Uh, but yeah. Follow us. We we put some. I'll tell you what. Our graphics guy Derek. He put some pretty cool graphics out too. So he really does. Yeah. Yeah. You'll like what he's putting out there. We do the the pictures with the quotes. People love them. Um, the little triangle in the background. It's lovely. It's very nice. Yeah. I have to say. It's good. Yeah. Shout out. Who's that, Derek? That's Derek. Yes. And uh, you can find him 
at peg leg gump is his uh handle <laughs> to find him so that. he'll make graphics for you too he is available for hire to make graphics as well and he does them relatively cheap we have him on a salary so mm. um you know what i mean yeah I'll, I'll make him make a thousand graphics a month for us <laughs> you get you guys get all all the good stuff in there for sure yeah That's definitely right. we get first crack Absolutely well. well, well deserved, especially after doing such a good job on this on this mock draft. So, Mike, once again, thank you so much for coming onto the show. Thanks everybody for listening. And remember, for anything dynasty, you need to know. Keep it locked on the certified inferno. See you next time. <laughs>